Hello, everyone. Uh, today we have a guest, David Millington. David is Embarcadero with P, software developer, software architect, uh, senior product manager uh, of Embarcadero Red Studio, Delphi and C++ at uh, Embarcadero company. And David has a particular passion for good UI and uh, focus on user experience. Hi, David. Hi, Sergey. It's great to be here. Yeah. And today we have a subject uh, uh, about UI design and Delphi projects. And why uh, did we select such topic today? Because uh, we think uh, uh, UI and the first opinion of your software, and not only first opinion, but also uh, UI and UX is very important nowadays. Maybe uh, it's not so important like it was 20 or 15 years ago. But uh, nowadays we have uh, legacy applications and we have brand new developments. And it's very important to use appropriate and correct UI for you, for our new developments. And of course, today we will talk about how to modernize our legacy software. And uh, that's why we have David here, because I think, uh, I, I know David uh, a lot of years, that he has, uh, a great experience is in this subject. Uh, David, what do you think? What, what do you mean about great UI and uh, a UI design uh, uh, at all for applications? Well, actually, before answering that, I was, just had a comment on some of the things you were saying um, about UI, and you're quite right. I think first impressions matter a lot. I mean, we all know that in terms of people, but I think you're completely right. It matters with software as well. Um, and people do judge software by how it looks as well as how it functions, but the look is what people see first. Um, but the other thing is about the importance of UI design, and I think this is something you know, maybe not as important as in you know, 15 or 20 years ago, but um, in a sense, I actually disagree. I think perhaps it's more important, and the reason for that is that we have a lot more software in the world being created by a lot more people, used by a lot more people, um, and with the growth of that, we've actually seen uh, a lot worse UI design appear, which kind of makes sense because as, as you have more uh, things being done, um, you know, there's perhaps a, a spread or diffusion across the industry. Um, and you know, I, I think that because of sort of the lack of quality of modern UI right now, learning about good UI um, is even more important. It, you know, it, it will make your app stand out uh, better among the, the crowd of quite terrible UI that's, that's out there. Because uh, you, we, we will now have such, let's say, terms uh, like, or trends like uh, Apple's look, or Apple style, uh, style uh, software or something like this. And people, when uh, they're talking about this, they, they, they mean that the application should be with a good UX, mm -hmm. uh, like, minimal amount of buttons and the maximal functionality because uh, again it was like 10 years ago it's like uh, this term was introduced before uh, we have our classic uh, applications like monolithic applications and but anyway what i wanted to say and what do you think uh, if we compare and we talk about desktop mobile and web is it uh, do we have some differences here or it's the same question. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely a lot of differences. Um, and I think often we see design sort of trying to use the same design systems and design, I don't know, metaphors, I guess, um, across your know, mobile and, and web and desktop. Um, I think this is because it's easy. Uh, you know, you have a design and then you can just implement it across your, your different devices. But I think it's a mistake. Uh, because each one of those uh, areas is different and, and works differently. Um, ignoring web for the moment, for example, mobile and desktop are fairly fundamentally different in how you interact. Um, you know, usually right now people want to have a desktop application uh, which, which look like uh, web applications, even sometimes. Uh, exactly. Not, not yeah. like to have a grid, like our classic uh, grid, but they want to have something like on draw to, uh, and it will look like website anyway, not like a desktop or our desktop application. 
And the question is why? And the answer is mostly in fashion. That's that's what people are doing. Yes, exactly. But uh, I want to add that sometimes we have uh, conservative domains, like for for instance banking, and they no, they they they, they, they cash uh, or clerk. They want to have classic Windows applications with uh, thousands of buttons, edits, uh, and the, what do you think? Do they need this? changes uh, in their industry well that's that's really interesting actually because i think that area is an example of really terrible ui design and also really good ui design so a lot of business apps like banking but any in-house internal app for you know any any company um the stereotype is that it's going to be really badly designed um it's not necessarily true but that's, that's just the stereotype um, you know, with lots and lots of buttons and fields and, and grids and, 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 and whatever, all just sort of crammed in closely. Yeah. Um, and of course, that's that's not good uh, because it's very difficult to understand visually. Um, but it's an interesting point that uh, domains like that tend to want to have more traditionally designed apps. Um, and I think the reason for that is that uh, in-house software has to be productive. So consumer software, like you and I use, if we don't like it, we can choose something else. Um, you know, if I don't like the design of uh, Open Office, for example, I can use Word or I can use Pages or, or something like that. Like there, there are alternatives, um, and although they're similar, sometimes they have quite different UI design. Like Pages has quite different UI design to Microsoft Word, and I have that choice. In a business using in-house software, you don't have a choice. You have a job; you have to use it. Um, you, you have no alternative. Uh, and that makes it more important for the designers of that software to do a really good job um, because effectively the users are trapped. Um, you know, if they want to have their job and do their job, they have to use the software. There is no alternative. Um, and so it has to be good. And so I think it's interesting that uh, you mentioned that you know, banks, for example, with their in-house software use more traditional, you mentioned conservative designs. And I think that's for a good reason. Uh, you know, when done well, those designs are often a lot more usable, um, you know, require less thinking to use than some of the sort of more modern trendier designs. There's nothing wrong with trendy. You just have to be prepared when you do something experimental that you might make a mistake or it might not be as good as something else and that's the you know what happens with experiments but mm -hmm. you know i think it's telling that when people are using software that has to be usable and has to be productive they'll go back to some of the older more traditional systems mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, maybe also we have to we have to have a target uh, let's say uh, on the user because uh, Mm, and maybe uh, when this, uh, let's say, people have the habits uh, to work with these classic interfaces, for them it will be not easy to use modern ones and find some feature. But but uh, again, uh, you know that if we have an only one edit on your page, mm -hmm. you have to understand how to work with this modern UI because you only already should have an experience. That's uh, you have to type start something or put uh, your mounts in some uh, corner, maybe for conservative people who are not such like we're grown on smartphones. Mm -hmm. For them, it will be not easy, uh, like to use modern UI, which we 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 have in our minds. Uh, That's a good point, I think, about being used to it because. Um... Like many years ago, and talking like 20 years ago, people used to talk about intuitive UI, which is not a term people mm -hmm. use anymore. And it was all about inventing UI that people would just understand. Um, and I'm not certain, maybe occasionally it was true, but I'm not certain ever really was true. I think the most intuitive UI is one that just follows principles people are already used to, exactly as you were saying. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting with some of the modern UI with smartphones, um, because Sometimes I watch people use their phones. Um, for example, uh, you know, I, I have nieces and they use their phones. And um, obviously, if they don't mind me looking, um, you know, in the, I've, I've tried to see how, how they interact. The reason for this is that 
you know, we have been using computers for years, but they are learning them right now. And they're learning them with modern UEs. And so I thought I can learn something by watching how these you know, young people interact with modern UEs. You know, maybe the reason that I like the old UEs is because that's, that's what I used back then. Um, and what I've seen, and this is anecdotal, um, but what I've seen is that you know, often there's a lot of difficulty figuring out these UEs. Um, you know, even if you grow up with it, as, as these people are growing up with it, they're still difficult to figure out. Um, you know, observe like a lot of tapping on the screen uh, just to try to get something to react because it's not obvious which things you can tap, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this points out a key flaw with some of the modern UE design. Like I've, I've always been worried that I, I like some of the more traditional UE design because you know, I'm 30 something and I grew up with it and it's what I was used to. But I think not. I think, the re I, I, you know, I think it's really true uh, that some of the modern UE design can be hard to figure out, even if you're used to it. Um, no, so yeah, really I agree with this. Sorry, Some, sometimes if I have some, uh, let's say, role in my application, I'm trying to find a way how to delete it. Like just pre, pre, uh, push and wait, just try to swipe or maybe something different. But, 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 but we already have such habits. But for instance, uh, my mom, I guess, won't uh, be able to do that if he, he, she's working in, I don't know, in the some retail industry. She will mm -hmm. want to have a remove button added mm -hmm. button add mm -hmm. the new new button but anyway uh well, it's, oh. it's interesting there as well like it, you, you mentioned retail because i was looking at a see i have this habit of looking at user interfaces wherever i go as you can mm -hmm. tell because you know, it's just talking about you know, looking at some um and of course quite common you know it used to be common to see pcs as the point of sale systems and now you often see ipads and, and that kind of thing and i've observed you know, the, the retail assistants, when they're trying to sell me something, they use this stuff every day and they know exactly how to use it because there's a customer every minute mm -hmm. buying something, right? And they'll try to tap and do stuff. Um, and I've observed some of the software and I found it really interesting in a shop I was in a couple of months ago to see software where someone just um, like rang up the sale really quickly. Mm -hmm. Like I know it's a fast thing to do, but I was just surprised how quick it was. And I caught a glimpse of the screen well, it was running an iPad. Uh, it looked like a modern iPad, so it'd be running modern iOS. Uh, the UE looked very different. It had a very custom UE, must have been themed. Um, and things like buttons had borders and bevels. And the input fields had like these slight sort of other bevels. In other words, a very old style design that someone had put on a modern UE. And again, it's anecdotal because I just bought from that shop once, but the person who was using it was incredibly fast. What makes a good UI design? Just your top five, uh, let's say, uh, characteristics of the desktop, let's say, software for modern application. What should we, if we are going to start brand new development, what should we do? Which, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, recommendations <coughs> we have to uh, uh, complete? Top five from you. It's a good question. I Minimal think... amount of buttons, no grids, light colors, dark modes, just you adjust an idea, but just five top five from you. I think actually least surprise. Um, which is another way of saying just copy what other people do. Because it's not so much about necessarily how many buttons you have or whether you use grids or not. Grids can be very powerful. I, I, I like grids. Mm -hmm. um, but about someone using this software, you said it was brand new, so your customers would never have used it before. Using it and um, they need, like, you need to get your customers familiar with it as soon as possible so they can use it productively. And the best way to do that is for it to already be familiar with them so they don't have a learning curve. And the best way to do that is to follow the same principles and designs and look as, as other software. So when I say least surprise, like I think what I really mean is just copy other software. <laughs> yes, less surprise, but in this case, should we mimic platform uh, UI and platform style? For instance, so, Windows yeah. 11, should we mim like try to copy it? 
I think so, yes. I mean, in a certain sense, least surprise also means like looking like everything else. Windows is in a bit of a mixture phase at the moment because it has you know, the new UI that it's trying to bring in that something like the settings dialog uses. Mm -hmm. um, but it's full of older style UI in, let's say, Explorer. Um, I think it doesn't matter which one of those two you pick. Uh, the point is that people will be used to both of them. Um, but that you should pick whichever one of those platform styles and, and stick to it because uh, you know, people will recognize it because they've used other software that looks just like it. Um, in other words, the long answer is saying Windows is a bit more complex, but effectively, yes, uh, you know, follow, follow the platform style. But anyway, like best practices, because for instance, uh, Windows 10, 11, uh, they try to remove model windows. They mm -hmm. have, let's say, anyway, like uh, web style navigation with back, go back, uh, go further. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this case, uh, uh, let's say, let's, ta let's take a classic uh, uh, desktop Windows application, for instance, from Delphi 7. Mm -hmm. When we have a lot of model windows, when we have tab controls, uh, what 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 do you think? Uh, well, imagine that we have this application which was developed ten years ago. What should we let's say do not use or use for, for a modern application for a modern UI? Tab controls, page controls, or something else? Well, an app like that will look quite old, um, and there are definitely things that you can upgrade that will make it function a lot more productively. Um, so although I have spoken about using older style paradigms, that doesn't mean you have to use all of them. <laughs> and tab controls are a great example. Um, they were very popular 20 years ago, and I, I, I personally think they're mm -hmm. quite bad UI design. Um, so sure, your example, Delphi 7 app, is probably full of tab controls, and that really should be improved. Uh, one of the reasons for that is the tabs hide stuff. So I mean, we talked about user interface principles earlier in top five, and I think I gave you like my top two or something, but another one would be don't hide things. Um, and you know, tabs by design hide, that's, that's what they do. Uh, you know, you have a set of things, and then you have a bunch of other tabs, which all have other stuff on it that you can't see. Um, and there are usually much better ways to organize uh, things, things like that than, than tabs. Um, and you mentioned your modal dialogues and going back and forward. Um, yeah, for for instance, we have uh, we have we have clients which uh, had a pain that our their software, let's say, have a desktop application, and they have let's say around nine levels of model windows. They want if, when they want to edit some parameter of some client, some for them more than UI and UX how we can go from this nine level levels of model windows. Hmm. Well, I, I think it's worth discussing first why nine levels of model windows is, is bad UX design. Um, and many people sort of say that you shouldn't use modals at all. And I, I tend to be a little more moderate there. I think just like just a little bit. The reason is that a modal dialogue is quite useful because it captures your view. You can only interact with it. And that's good because uh, you know, it, it helps your user focus on what they're doing right now. But uh, when you have lots of levels of modal dialogues, it, it can become overwhelming because you have to maintain in your head this kind of set of navigation steps that you have to go through. You know, to a particular setting, you have to go to this dialogue, this tab, click this button, which opens the dialogue, clicks this button, opens this dialogue, then you have to go to this tab choose this combo box, click this button to get another dialogue to get the thing you want to get to. Oh. And that's uh, yeah, overwhelming, I think, for many people. Like You have to maintain this tree uh, of, of interaction in, in your head. Um, and although as programmers, sometimes we might be good at maintaining tree structures in our heads, um, even for us, it's complicated. You know, I, I, I think that anything that can be described as complex like that is a bad idea. And that's, that's why um, what you're describing is, is bad UX. And I think that's worth mentioning first before then deciding how to improve it. Um, so what, what we're really discussing there when we're going through that, that tree is a, um, a flow that the user has to 
go through to, to go through um, you know, from one thing to another. Um, and modal dialogues themselves are also a way of hiding something because when you have a modal dialogue open, you can't access what was behind it. Um, so using those principles, you can then think, well, okay, perhaps a different way to, to implement this would be some kind of UX where uh, you, you're not having anything hidden, so you can see on screen everything that you need to see, including how you got to wherever you got to. Um, and you can read the, the previous information. And this often gives a UE where um, it'll be drastically simplified. I don't mean in the terms of fewer buttons or something, but where if you have um, your know, steps, you go from the modal dialogues, would you, you choose this tab and this button, this dialogue or whatever, you'll have a larger screen perhaps. Um, and you, know, you might be able to select something and then it will directly open a few panels that will have information about it. And you can have in you know, perhaps a slightly bigger window, but like a lot less UI, uh, the same flow of steps and it will all be open on one page. The nice thing about that is that you can read it easily. Um, you know, nothing is hidden. You'll just have it all there on, on screen. You won't have to navigate exactly because it'll be, be there. Um, I'm sort of talking in hand wavy vague terms. No, you mean you mean uh, that instead of instead of uh, having a lot of levels of model windows, we should, we can have something like uh, we are open in one uh, one let's say uh, a forum. Uh, mm -hmm. If we want to add something, we have a panel on the right, on the right, on the right, and we have let's say like horizontal or scrolling, and it will be like, let's say like uh, one of the. Uh, one of the options have to, instead of using model windows, we will have a lot of panels on one window, on one screen with, with a horizontal scrolling. Similar well, like uh, Microsoft Azure uh, has, if you remember their panel portal. It's been a while since I used Azure, but I do remember quite a complex UE there. Um, I think yes and no. I think scrolling by itself is also an example of hiding something because then you have to go to look for it. Um, and what I prefer to have is just one window where you might select something and then yes, a pane on the right uh, shows. That's that's really good. But um, it's only, let's say two levels or three levels, but not like seven levels. Exactly, yeah. And I think two is better than three even. Okay. The interesting thing is you mentioned back and forward earlier and back and forward is really linear. Whereas the um, you either you describe as lots of modal dialogues is, is sort of a tree structure because it gets more complex as you click more buttons and can open more things. But what you can really try to do is to flatten that to something that to the user seems linear, so they just go back and forward. So if you know as the designer that someone is going to have to navigate through in your old UE here to here to here to here to here, um, instead create that as a straight flow, just back and forward. And then you can just have a window and it goes here and you go forward and then you look at that, go forward, look at that. And to the user, uh, you've converted into a simple step-by-step -step process, something that in your old design would have been navigating the hierarchy of a tree of potential options. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not certain if that quite answers your question, but I think that's what I'm trying to develop, like the modern UE styles there that have, I guess, a web-like to go back and forward can be a lot simpler to use than that sort of deeply nested modal uh, thing. And, and, and the key there is you as a developer thinking about what the goal of the user wants and then tracing this path and making that path be, be a linear path. In, in your code, you might still have a tree, uh, but you don't have to show that tree to the user. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe um, later we will talk a little bit more about uh, with this best practices because I also want to uh, ask you about so you remember the settings windows with like 20 30 uh, captions and uh, edits but before mm -hmm. uh, before I switch uh, to that and exactly to Delphi and then because I want also want to uh, ask you a little bit about difference uh, VCL and FMX and capabilities of this to uh, both, both platforms I, I'd like to 
uh, also uh, you know your opinion about difference between UI and UX. Because for me, it's something like uh, we have to serve calls, but they like crossed each other. Let's say it's not like two totally different terms. Because for me, UI, it's more like it look like UX, it's more like people use it, mm -hmm. like navigation. What do you think? What, what's your uh, opinion about it? Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, UI or user interface design is sort of what it used to be in today's user experience design. Mm -hmm. um, and I've met people who sort of scoffed at the term because you know, the word experience seems, I don't know, vague or, or something like that, but I actually think it's quite valuable. Um, because it shows that when you're designing the user experience, you're not just thinking about the UE as in what buttons are where, but about what it's like to use it. Um, and I think that's actually one of the essence of good design is when you start really thinking about what is it actually like to use. And that, of course, is the experience of using it. Um, so I think you're right. You know, I, I would call UE design as uh, focusing on a particular user interface and you know, like the colors, buttons, round, round corners, like something gray like that. gradients, and so on. Yeah, and and user experience would be a higher level view, your know, view of really thinking about what it's like to your users. You know, you don't really worry yet about even if you have buttons or edit controls, but you think about. Um, some like like, a, like user will be able to reach some let's say setting or some um, something of inside your application mm. what's like yes navigation what else like this model windows same same thing like um i think perhaps it's i mean things like modal windows or or something like that are sort of like a result of thinking about the ux um I think UX is sort of higher level, so you would think about, is it easy to achieve a goal? Like someone sits down with the software and they need to do something, um, even if it's something simple like a game, you know, you always have a goal that you need to do. And the UX perhaps is like, how straightforward is it to do this? How obvious is it to, to do this? Uh -huh. um, and you know, a modal window is a particular implementation, and it might be really obvious, there might be a button saying, you know, click this and you know, which is pretty clear um, and then you click it and you can do something in there um, but that's a particular implementation of someone thinking about the ux about how to make it obvious about you know where to go what what steps to take in order to, to achieve a goal i see and if uh, by the way if we're talking about uh, like say modern and you and trendy ui do we have any uh, limitations nowadays if we are talking about developing with Delphi if compare with other tools or with Delphi? We do not have any limitations and we can do brand new and modern UI applications for uh, mobile, at least it's for mobile and desktop application. Do you agree with me that we do not have any limitations? Oh, very much. I think it's one of the reasons I like Delphi so much is that it's so flexible and you can do so much with it. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I cannot think of any limitations. <laughs> you, know, you can you build a wonderful mobile app if, 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 if you want to with Delphi uh, very easily. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's, it's, it's yes, this is, I, I, I just wanted uh, to mention for our uh, listeners and uh, because it's important that sometimes, uh, sometimes I can uh, have some, uh, let's say, counter arguments from uh, other people from other technology, technologists and I'm trying to explain to them that uh, implementation and how it can look like it does not uh, have, it doesn't have anything common with like uh, any limitations because the, the people, people have in their brains heads that uh, Delphi is like classic applications because they have again the developers because they have a lot of experience with that. And uh, let's say maybe, maybe uh, we are like Delphi developers uh, have a lot of like habits, uh, which we got during this a lot of years and we just not like, uh, we're not inventing something. Okay, we have a brand trend, but we can implement it without any problems. Okay, we can implement application, which will look desktop application, which will look like web application, why not? 
we can do that. We don't have, we don't need, let's say, JavaScript or HTML for that. Of course, the uh, web, the applications in Delphi, it's totally different. Uh, let's say question, but if we're talking about Delphi, I can implement desktop application, which will look like web application. I can implement and use all high DPA, DPI uh, techniques. Uh, I can use all, all any forms. I can implement any like images, uh, stretchings, uh, 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 all this like uh, adaptation of the forms and so on. Oh yeah, so all that is very true. I mean, you can build anything you want, um, and and it can look really good as well. You know, some of the tech that's you know like GPU powered and has you know fantastic transitions and all this kind of stuff uh, can can be really good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the thing I like about Delphi with this kind of stuff is that it can be very quick to prototype. Um, so you can prototype and iterate and improve. Yeah, your... yeah by the way, that's the, our next, let's say, uh, discussion question. Like, Fantastic. Yeah. if we are talking about uh, what, what, what can, can you or share with us, like your steps, which you can suggest if you want to have new application, how we should start to prototype it using Delphi or using some other uh, prototyping tool. By the way, yes, I want to add that here we, we are not affiliated and we are not, let's say, uh, advertising uh, Delphi or any other prototyping tool. We're just sharing our experience, guys. It's not like now, no, 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 nobody uh, uh, pay us and uh, it's just like our uh, honest experience. Mm -hmm. And that's why, David, uh, how, how you, you will suggest if I want to develop new application with Delphi, how should I start prototyping? Just as I, as I said, use some uh, third party tool or using uh, Delphi uh, ID or maybe other some suggestions. Well, I, th I think it's very common for UE designers to use other tools like Figma, for example, is, is this. Down Which down. one? Which one? Uh, Figma. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Figma, yeah. Is, is a very common one. And, and, and people use that to kind of prototype how something should look. But you know, Figma oh, cannot. Uh, cannot do not figma doesn't have like you said interactions like we cannot implement interactions with figma. exactly and i mean delphi has the ue designer itself that is as quick or quicker to use than figma's layout designer mm -hmm. thing is in a you're in figma for example like you, you'll create i mean let's assume you use figma and you create something and then you have to give it to someone to implement um it's a lot slower and less efficient than using a a UE design tool that lets you achieve everything Figma does um, that you can prototype and iterate directly in something that will eventually become your software. You know, like that's Delphi's UE designer. Um, so I, mean, I, I personally find it a lot more productive when I use tools like this, or perhaps I can say I find it the other way. I find it a little frustrating to use tools like Figma, not because they're bad tools and like they're very good, but because it introduces unnecessary uh, steps, anything you do there is going to have to go through more layers and take more time, it'll be more slow to actually convert into something that you can test out and, and, and use. Um, yes, but uh, if we're talking about Delphi, we should yeah. have a developer. But if you want to start like a UI designer, maybe don't have the knowledge how to use Delphi. Well, that's true, but I think Delphi is so straightforward that for prototyping a UE um, is very easy to pick up. I mean, there's definitely as easy as Figma to use. Yeah, but you 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 uh, you mentioned Delphi as like uh, our normal, uh, let's say, design time designer where I can take a form and put controls, but uh, we have to add interactions like button clicks and events anyway in this case. Well, that's true, and I think that probably crosses into implementation. Um, it's thinking more about the idea of sort of prototyping and trying to come up with a UE that you think has good design or, or good flow. Um, and well, I guess it's something that does have to cross to being interactive. Sorry, go ahead. I think that, uh, let's say, not for too complicated UI designs, we can do that. But uh, I again, I have like a 
like my own experience that sometimes, uh, sometimes like uh, we have different steps. The first step, like some our artist mm -hmm. prepare for us some images. If we are talking about some, let's say, uh, application from some fashion industry, or when some other people will look how it looks like, or some touch screens, or so on, designer prepare some image, and after that, we should have uh, uh, we have to implement some prototype before coding, some prototype with some tool, and sometimes it's uh, not easy to put these uh, um, drawings from the designer to the dev because uh, you have to, you, you should know all this knowledge anyway, for instance, even later we will talk about VCL and FMX and so different principles. Uh, no, maybe I, I, I'd like to it from my side that after we have some uh, 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 design from artists, we can use Delphi as a prototype in tool, but mm -hmm. sometimes we have a request that we should on the fly share uh, this result with something else uh, via the web, for instance. Like we design a prototype in something and somebody else like client or product owner uh, checking how it look like and on the fly can even add some uh, recommendations. Uh, in this case, we suggest to use some prototype tools like, I don't know, do you know this like hot glue, like Axure uh, RP, and uh, some similar, but, but after that, we just have, let's say like, like a cartoon in the web, like uh, we can add interactions also like clicks, uh, navigations, even some uh, events listeners. And only after that, after let's say all this, let's say it's not technical stuff, like not technical people approved how it look like. Only after that, we are giving this uh, to Delphi, a developer, of fire market developer because sometimes it's it, it took a lot of time to implement how it look like uh how without any back uh, back uh let's say background logic with fire monkey because sometimes design can be too complicated we can mm. draw from scratch edit buttons grids forms and so on I, th I think that's a really good point, especially about the collaborative design there, because you were saying you had people who wanted to give live feedback and that kind of thing. And some of those tools, I think what I said earlier was from the perspective of one designer just prototyping something. But if you have a team, uh, including that you want to have rounds of approvals and changes and have something live, those tools can be really valuable for that. You know, even just being able to you know, click somewhere and leave a comment about a particular thing. Um, you know, I've, I found that very useful in the past as well. So yeah, you're you're right. The other thing that stuck out to me from from what you were saying was sometimes the difficulty of implementing something because you know, you might have a design that looks really good but that can actually be tricky to implement in a particular technology, and I think that's a a risk um, that many you know, many software houses and designers run into because you can always draw something that looks really good, but you have to be aware of the system they're actually designing it for. Um, and so running into a problem like that, I think is a, a problem with, a problem that the design team should not have really, because all design is through constraints. I mean, let's talk about the design of a door, for example, there are con constraints of the real world, it has to be big enough for a person It has to be not so big that it's so heavy that you can't open it, it has to, you know, you have to deal with the materials, you know, you might have wood or metal or glass available to you, but you don't have, you know, you don't have a sci fi force field available to you, those, those are constraints. Um, they're constraints of the real world. And wherever you implement a design, you might have a design for a phone or something, that phone has constraints too. It has constraints about you know, the screen size or about- Yeah, um, but, but we have, we, we have, we have or... two camps, two camps. Yeah. Technical guys who will uh -huh. tell you, yes, we have these constraints, it doesn't work this way. No, it should like people have habits with this, but we have another marketing team. Mm -hmm. But they have, no, we, we should invent something totally different. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, and all this camp, these two camps, like fight with each other because they thought this it does it won't work this way. People won't use it. This camp is telling no, we should have a revolution, mm-hmm. good sales. We should have a, like a, let's say put a step in this world like uh, <laughs> that's. And, and you also have an uh, experience uh, like uh, developing application for huge corporations and inside huge corporations. In this case, uh, like let's say final, what is your suggestion of the correct flow like from the idea to the implementation, how it should look like? It's not like, I, of course, I'm like a developer. I'll do everything myself. I'll do uh, as, like it should like look like, but uh, in if you're talking about a huge company, it doesn't work this way. But it's, it's interesting as well that you were talking about those two camps, like the technology and the designers, you know, sort of... Even you... sometimes not designers. It's, it's, in this case, three camps, marketing and sales, designers yeah. and developers. Yeah. But look, in, in some cases, that can be really good. Um, you know, you do have to follow the constraints of the real system that you're using and implementing but those kind of pools and those kind of discussions like there's a term i I like which is um cooperative conflict Mm -hmm. so you will have people who are you know arguing about stuff like you know we need this and oh we can't do this we have to do it this way and and so forth um and if if you let any one of those camps win something will go wrong um you know if, if the people who just want something extraordinarily imaginative win then we incredibly difficult to actually implement if the people who just sort of stick to oh i know how to do this then you might get something quite boring um you know if you view that as direct conflict obviously that's not a good thing within a team you don't want conflict within a team but cooperative conflict is where you have people who all have the same goal because you're all working together to create something but you all sort of pull each other in different directions and that can be really inspirational um, and sometimes when you have a team that works like that really well, you can create something extraordinary uh, because of that, you know, cooperative, because you're all working together, conflicting different directions and ideas can really spark something. So, sorry, I should get on to the question you actually asked, but I, I do think that sometimes when you have a team that works well like that, you can create something fantastic. I agree um, with you, yeah. You, you were asking, I think, about the, the flow that I think oh, yeah. should have. Like the, the process, uh, like uh, what is your like uh, recommendation um, for this process? I think there's there's a fairly good standard flow, which is that you begin with the UX designer. Why, why, and... why, why did I ask you this question? Because as you said about constraints and limitations, mm-hmm. because for instance, we have a component, for instance, for some navigation. And mm-hmm. developer has a plan to use this control, but designer doesn't know about this capability. So the and he can draw everything just like custom, hundred mm-hmm. percent. How to uh, how to build this flow and explain that should everybody should be on the same page. I think if a designer does that, that indicates a, a problem with the design because. As a designer, your role is not just to draw something that looks good, but it is to be aware of the system within which you're designing. So you should know that there are certain components available that can be used. And if you don't know that, um, then you can't design something effectively. Um, Effectively, you're saying you need to be aware of the tools that that, um, are available to you. Um, So I, I think if you have a designer who is unaware that there are particular controls or components that can be used to implement the design they create, then that's uh, you know, a lack in the design. Like you, you're going to get a much worse design there because they're, they're not aware of the, um, uh, you know, the, the implementation. A good design flow will obviously have a UX designer who is an expert in design and and how someone interacts and so forth but they will either have some knowledge of of what's going to be used to implement or you know as well or better they will be working with the developer while they're designing um you know i 
actually think in general, this is good working with people in principle, because it's a bit like that cooperative conflict earlier, like you'll always have more ideas when you have more people. But a designer might work with a developer and each one of them will have ideas. You know, a designer might say, okay, look, we're trying to present the data in this particular way. And I've sort of drawn this mock-up of this thing that I think will work like this. And designer will say, oh, yes, and actually we can implement that with this control and the control will be able to do this other thing. Um, and the designer will be able to take advantage of the knowledge of the actual behavior of potential implementations in the design. Um, so although it's easy to have a flow of design to implementation, I think iterative communicative design as it goes through that system uh -huh. is, is, is much better. Yeah. I also agree with you. Okay, now, uh, now uh, I would like to discuss the uh, difference uh, between VCL and FMX frameworks. You guys know that uh, when uh, Embarcadero introduced FMX for a monkey engine, it's, uh, let's say, totally different principles of uh, rendering your, uh, our applications. Like uh, VCL is based on GDI, Mm -hmm. messaging uh, and uh, we say uh, fmx of our monkey is based on the uh, idea of different uh, layers of your control like which your control uh, uh, consists of uh, different layers of element controls uh, and uh, i think my opinion is that it's we have a lot of uh, the possibilities to implement totally custom cars uh, UI and it, it, it will be uh, easier to implement it if compare, for instance, with uh, GDI. For GDI and VCL, we have to, uh, let's say, use on paint uh, mm -hmm. events and draw everything like we want to have. But with uh, FMX, we can uh, combine our own control from element controls. What do you think, David, about it? And um, I may correct it all. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I, th I think that's really insightful, actually, because most people, when they talk about the difference between FMX and VCL, will just talk about the technology. You know, is it based on Windows or does it render on the GPU or something? But I think you've hit on something that's really important about FireMonkey there, which is that FireMonkey is very flexible. Um, and I, th I think it gives you more building blocks. So the VCL will have like a, a whole control um with five monkeys you have four controls as well but you can uh build something up out of these other layers and pieces and bits uh, much more powerfully um for example there's a control in in five monkey that um you know, is, is is a kind of list view uh, but you can build up you know traditional list view just has items in it that have no bit of text or something a bit of an image in five monkey it's really easy to build up uh, custom list items that contain anything, you know, other controls even. Um, and that's because of, of what you were saying. It's, it has this different design with you know, the layers and you know, that, that, that kind of thing that um, uh, gives you more control over yeah, the, the building blocks of how you do something. Um, no, I mean, very... correct that this idea, have, uh, idea has something common with HTML and XAM from uh, WPA from Microsoft. When you combine so. your, yes, like even in text, you can combine your, or like in HTML, combine your complicated control with mm. uh, some amount of uh, element controls. Yeah, I think so. I, I think all of these things were, in HTML, I actually think it kind of happened a bit by accident, but um, the end result is the same, that yes, all of these tools share something in that you can, you can build something out of much smaller, uh, smaller pieces if you, if you want to. Um, and um, I think uh, uh, we, have, we, have it, uh, we have it also because of uh, cross-platform uh, capabilities, because when we have all this, a lot of uh, layers of this control engine and uh, compilers, uh, of uh, Delphi will know how to put this, uh, how to split these layers to native, uh, uh, native application and native uh, rendering engine. Let's say mm -hmm. for Android, it will go to uh, uh, to 
uh, how to how, what is the name of their activities so that, that it will go to activities for ios it will go to the forms and so on and for windows uh, for windows anyway it will compile to native uh, applications as well uh, it's not like uh, because uh, yes uh, guys for delphi we do not have any virtualization levels uh, ex exactly for supporting delphi platform delphi is not a platform delphi is a tool which compiles to native application mm -hmm. uh, in the end we have a native application uh, with all native possibilities mm. Yeah, it right. seems like a really powerful paradigm switch, actually, because we were talking about the pieces earlier, but the cross-platform thing that you mentioned as well, it happened at the same time. FireMonkey introduced both of those at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. It's a yeah. big switch that's very powerful um, in, mm -hmm. in, in two whole different ways uh, with, with FireMonkey. You're, you're, you're mm -hmm. completely correct. Yes, uh, this is why, and this is why we want to... Is it, if you even did not try uh, FMX before, you have to try it. Because from our uh, commercial experience, I can say that uh, we can implement everything. Uh, if what your artist can draw everything and we can implement it. Even mm -hmm. with all custom scroll bars, grids, editing principles and so on. Uh, if, you, if you don't know how to implement something, just share with us, with David, and we, we will give you some uh, recommendations. Of it is immensely flexible, yeah. Yeah, but uh, from the uh, modern part, part of uh, our favorite tool, let's um, go back to uh, our legacy applications, because mm -hmm. we also have a lot of legacy uh, software, uh, which we are supporting the software. And sometimes we have a request. We have uh, after 15 years uh, ago developed great application which works uh, right now as expected. Mm -hmm. But a uh, client have uh, like one request. Can we do it modern? Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what 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 can we suggest for him? If this is not a monolithic, like and we, we are happy if we have like layers like uh, front office and uh, business logic divided like some pattern. But if we do not have such pattern, if we, what we should can do, we should, uh, what do you think? We should uh, the, implement all UI from scratch, or we can use, try to use some Delphi styles. What, what What's the best, what do you think? What, which steps we can use? So your, your question is about how to modernize an old app. How to modernize. Yes, because the, 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 the first answer is that, just okay, just develop from scratch your UI part. Mm. But, but sometimes it's too expensive. Well, developing something new from scratch can work. Um, and of course, Delphi is really good for that. because yeah, you Especially can, if you're talking about reconstruction, <laughs> your house yeah. reconstruction maybe. <laughs> but um, if, if, if about software development. Uh, but yeah. you know, if it is, you have monolithic application inside your form, you have a lot of business logic. Mm -hmm. and how to but our client he doesn't want to hear such from scratch why do i think why do i need to develop from scratch? i have a working application why why do i need from scratch well that's a good question and it's probably wiser not to do from scratch as well uh, because i tend to think that rebuilding something from scratch you i mean it's a big job and often there's a lot of your work that's been done in the past that was valuable and done for a reason that gets lost. Um, so, you know, really the, the best thing with something like that is to, I mean, you need to upgrade to like modern tech, like a modern version of Delphi that has the ability and the controls and the UI and the tech and all that kind of thing that, that we've been talking about that, that will let you have your know, more modern features. But you're assuming that you do that and so you've given yourself the, the capacity to, to upgrade. Uh, or, or to modernize. Uh, then I think there are, there are a few simple steps you can do. And I think one of the biggest things is just to do it bit by bit, um, you know, screen by screen. You, know, you don't need to do the whole app at a time. Uh, you might want to start with a particular dialogue or you know, the main home screen or something like that. And you know, over the next few versions, you can sort of improve step by step. Um, and you can do that a few ways. You mentioned styles, which I think is a really nice way to give a, 
a, a sort of fresh or new look to something with with very little work. Um, and you know, styles can be used to give a, a particularly unusual look if you have a particular um, you know, design in, in mind. Sometimes that can be really good because businesses want to like brand their apps. Mm -hmm. But there are other styles I think that just look very clean and modern. We were talking about following the, the platform UI earlier and that's good. But even something like Rad Studio or Delphi itself uses style. Um, and you know, it, it looks quite similar to the platform UI, but it actually looks a little bit different. Um, and it's very recognizably us uh, without being so different that it's um, you know, difficult to, to read or understand or, or something. And that's, that's how we implemented like our light style, which happens to use like shades of blue rather than shades of white and the dark style and so forth. And so it's very easy to use something like that to give an app a, a sort of modern look uh, quite quickly. Um, I mean, you know, once you choose a style really in a modern version of Delphi, it's just a matter of turning it on in the options dialog and recompiling and there you have it. Um, but other than things like that, I think a lot of the new controls that we provide can be very useful um, because they have a more modern or more clear approach. You were talking a lot about sort of like the data flow earlier. And so we have controls that, that can help do that. So you might want to identify you know, do it step by step. You might want to identify a particular screen or a particular window that is key to your users and you want to improve. You don't need to rewrite it. You can just start you know, replacing or altering some bits of it. All the underlying business code remains the same, um, but you can make use of those tools just to rework a particular window a bit. Yeah, you know, and then release a new version of your software and then you know, the next version, do that for a couple more windows and so forth. And you have this nice, smooth, iterative process. Um, you can get something out fast when you do it that way. If you do a complete rewrite, it's going to take a long time. Um, mm -hmm. I know I perhaps I'm, I hope I'm actually answering your question, but there are a lot of techniques from like you know, the fast styles to just like an approach about how to modernize something. It's always, it's always key to get software out quickly. Uh, styles are really good for that because, like I said, it's just turning on an option. Um, but with any other change you do, it's important to get software out quickly. You don't have to do the whole thing all in one go. You can you know, improve something step by step, as long as you give yourself the, the technology that you can use to improve something, like a, you, know, you upgrade to a modern version, then you can take advantage of that and just do things bit by bit. Yeah, I also suggest to use uh, uh, less risky uh, practices like yes don't break everything and mm -hmm. just uh, uh, because uh, it's too risky just uh, yes try to step by step uh, of course sometimes it's uh, not easy because if you want to change like your navigation or like uh, structure of your application yes you, you have to uh, break a lot of uh, things but uh, continuous uh, developments is is best is good to practice, not just break everything and wait one year and then release something. It's of course. The, the thing uh, about music is interesting because we haven't mentioned tests yet. Yeah. Because um, I guess we've been talking about UE design, but you know, many people I think might have code tests, but it's quite rare in my, especially for legacy applications to have UE tests or tests that actually test the user interface um, and test that something doesn't get broken accidentally. Um, and you know, if you don't already have those, then when you redesign a UE, that's a really good point to actually add that in for, for what you redesign. You know, there are tools like you know, Renorex, for example, um, that you know, can run tests on a user interface. And you know, obviously you can keep changing and modifying the interface, but they will test that um, you know, something doesn't accidentally break. Uh, because the only way you know that is really by using the app and, and a UE test will, will, will do that for you. Rather, perhaps a little off topic for UE design, but I think it's important if you do redesign something, it's the perfect time to, to introduce something like that. Exactly, because, because yes, we also have an experience with your Renorex and um, sometimes it's not easy to use EU, exactly UE tests, automate, automate UE tests, of course, yeah. you know how to automate uh, code. Uh, source code test but um, yes i agree it's uh, maybe uh, totally it's a different as uh, a topic and subject uh, uh, for the discussion and 
in the end, in the end, uh, guys, I want to add that good UI and good UX, it's, it's not about some exact tool or it's like about some tool which was all new, like trendy software development and programming language. Uh, best uh, and good UI and UX is exactly about what we discussed today. Let's say it's, let's say it's like more uh, uh, experience and less technology because you don't need to take uh, some technology which was introduced two years ago for good UA or good UX. It's, it's not, it's nothing common with that. Mm. I, I, David wanted to add this because Sometimes I can hear such arguments that uh, we can, we don't need, we, we should not use Delphi because we won't be able to implement uh, Apple style design. No, it's Apple style design. It's not about a, a development a tool or programming language. Do you agree with me? Very much. And actually that's an old criticism because you can implement anything you want in Delphi. Um, yeah. but, but yeah, you're, you're, you're right. Honestly, we can uh, discuss more and more uh, questions because I have a lot of, uh, and it's, uh, it's impossible to discuss all of them. Yeah. Uh, and we have a time, end. and I guess, uh, um, do you have uh, something um, what you want, would like to add in the end of this our session? Uh, what you can suggest for young developers uh, for uh, old school developers, uh, do you have uh, something what to want to add? That's a good question. I mean, we've talked about a wide range of things. Um, you know, I don't necessarily add something like, oh, just use Delphi because it's easy, because although that's true, that's um, it's not really the point of the, the, uh, the conversation. Um, I think the most valuable thing to me about UI design is studying, uh, maybe not even studying, just trying to observe. Um, and I mean, observing both other people using UIs, like I mentioned earlier, just, just you watching some people trying to figure stuff out. Um, but also looking at other UIs that you use. I mean, look at other software and see how it does stuff um, and see if you find it easy to use that. Um, or if you know, there's something, because often it's very common to have very good looking software and you're used to it. So you think it's easy because you're used to it, but you know, study your own uh, interactions there and sort of think, you know, what are the bits here that actually just could be a little bit smoother? Um, you know, across all the software they use, you know, desktop on web on mobile, um, you know, everywhere and just, you know, when, when you start being aware of something, you can start sort of seeing what other people do and figure out why or how it could be improved. I think once you get to that step of thinking, okay, they've done this, but it could be better if they did this, then that's the point where you're becoming a really good UX designer and you can put that into practice in, in your own apps. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. In this case, we, we, I think we are done for today. You guys, if you have any questions about uh, how to implement more than your e and UX for your application, I think you can uh, uh, reach uh, David. By the way, how people can reach you? Uh, Twitter. Um, yeah, Twitter is is good, um, and uh, email as well. Perhaps you can put those on screen in the in the recording. Uh -huh. Um, yes. Um, also, also, we you can ask uh, any questions to David uh, in the comments to this video. It will be on YouTube. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, I we want to wish you all the best with your new developments and uh, new UI designs, David. Well, thank you, and I think you should add that you should talk to Sergey as well. I mean, um, you know, his his team do do good work, uh, so. Yeah, I mean, so again, make sure we thank you. Thank you, well. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. See you on our next uh, videos. Bye, bye. Have a good day.